Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa wa So the last time we discussed the blood in more detail, I forgot to mention that any blood that comes out from the private parts, from the urethra, like from the penis or from the vagina, from the urethra, from the bowels, scholars consider that as najis. And the evidence for that is that they consider it just like the blood of menstruation. They have, it has the same ruling as the blood of menstruation. We don't have any specific text talking about these kinds of bloods, but just like some scholars considered all blood as unclean or impure, because they made an analogy between all kinds of blood of coming out from, human, from a human being to the blood of menstruation, that's a bit going a little bit to the extreme. But if they, but people who thought that or, or made the decision that the blood that comes out from the private parts, that's a little bit close to menstruation mm -hmm. because it comes from uh, an area where there might be najasa coming out with the blood. Or if it comes out from the bowel, for sure there is najasa mixed with the blood. Or if it comes out from, <clears throat> uh, from the urethra as well. So they consider all these kinds of bloods that come out from as sabilain They call it al-kharij min as sabilain That the, it is najis. Okay, uh, that's important to know. Um, then, the next type of impurity is al-mayta. Al-mayta, it is any dead animal that died without being properly sacrificed according to the Sharia, uh, that it's considered as Mayta. Um, and the evidence that it is Najis is a saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا دُبِغَ الْإِهَابُ فَقَدْ طَهُرُ Which means that if the hide of the animal is processed, what do you call the processing of the hide? It has a name. When you take the fur of the animal and you process it and you clean it, and it has a name. The skin. The skin of the animal. What's it called? Huh? You mentioned that name last time. We, we... Tanning. Tanning. Tanning, correct. Tanning of the hide. Tanning of the skin of the animal or, uh, or, or the hide of the animal. That will render it as pure, which indicates that before this process, it was impure. It was najis. <clears throat> Different versions of the same hadith. Also, if something is cut off of an animal while this animal is alive, that piece that was cut off is considered as mayta. It has the same ruling of najasa or uncleanliness or impurity as a dead animal as well. Okay. Um, the exception is the dead animal mayta uh, samak wal jarad. Uh, the, the fish, any animal that lives in the sea and dies, its, uh, the, 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 its corpse is not considered impure in the Islamic law. It is considered as tahir. It is pure, clean. Okay? So the dead fish or any, or any other dead animal that lives in the sea, like the octopus, for instance. Huh? Yeah, for instance, uh, all of them are. A uh, crocodile lives mostly in the sea, yes, but you have to know that um, they made a distinction between the animals. No, seriously, they made a distinction between the animals that live purely in the sea and those that live part outside and part inside. So they say that the ones that live mostly in the water, they take the ruling of the animals of the water. And those that live mostly outside, they take the ruling of the animals that live uh, outside, the, the land animals, okay? No, it's, uh, uh, not, it's not a matter of eating. No, we're, not, we're talking about cleanliness, purity or impurity. Najasa or tahara, correct? Uh, no, we have not approached eating at all yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that's important. But you have to know that every, everything that is najis is haram to eat in general. So every najis is haram to eat. But not everything that is haram to eat is najis. So there, are, there could be some things that are prohibited to eat, but they are Tahir, they are pure. If it comes on your clothing, it does not, it does not have to be washed off. Can somebody mention an example? Uh, 
Yeah, something. Huh? What is that? The blood of the animal that we are allowed to eat. Yes. We can't eat the blood, but the blood itself is not not just for the purification purpose. But we talked about the blood of the animal that we're allowed to eat. We made multiple distinctions in more detail. No, it's not. It, remember, we talked about it. If it's the pouring blood, the consensus that it is najis. But the blood that's still within the meat, that is considered as pure or clean, okay? No, a good example might be... Sanitizer. So, yeah, something like this. The sanitizer, it is... Um, it is uh, clean and pure. It is not najis, but why can't you eat it? Why is it haram to eat or, or, or consume? Not only because it's, it's poisonous, you will die. <laughs> Allah says, Allah says, Wala taqtulu anfusakum. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> and that is why poison in general, all poisons, and most poisons or all of them are really tahir. The, if, if the poison comes on your clothing or your skin, you don't have to wash it off. But it, it's prohibited. If somebody consumed it, of course, it's a huge sin. It's haram. Correct? So we will not drink that. Alcohol, exactly. <laughs> and alcohol, uh, in general, it's haram to consume. And the majority of scholars consider it as najis, unclean. But the stronger opinion is what? It is clean and tahir. And we talked about this, we will shall talk about it in more detail. Because the evidence supports that. The, the evidence supports that it is. And this is what we concluded the last class with, okay? Uh, I have a question about uh, the dead animals. Yes. Because when we are talking about dead animals, for example, what in, in what respect, if a dead animal is in the water, uh, if it's a small animal, does that water become natchez? No, no, no. Any animal that lives in the water and dies. No, not, not water animals. So if what? There's a squirrel or if there's a oh, no, no, no. If, it, it's, if it's a land animal and dies in the water, that animal is najis. It's unclear. The water itself. The water, the water itself. If, if it decomposes and basically changes the characteristics of the water, then the water becomes najis. Remember, we talked about the, the water. If something najis fell into it, it has to change its characteristics for that water to be rendered as unclean or impure. But if it fell in it and you got it out before it changed any of the features of the water, mm. the water is clean and pure. Okay? Mm. Clear, uh, clear on that one? You have to know also that um, the hide of the animals that were not allowed to eat uh, it remains najis, it remains najis even after tanning. The tanning only makes the hide and the fur of the animals that we're allowed to eat as pure, otherwise it remains as najis, it remains as najis. That's important, okay? Uh, so an example of an animal we're not allowed to eat, such as a tiger or a lion uh, or even a crocodile and things like this, uh, these animals that have, the carnivorous animals that have fangs, these are pro prohibited. So those remain najis no matter how much you process hyena? them. Huh? Hyena. We talk, <laughs> <laughs> hyena, hyena we, we mentioned this before, uh, like we talked about it in a little bit more detail because in Somalia they like to eat it. <laughs> I, 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 it's, not, it's not a joke, it is real. <laughs> they like, <laughs> in Somalia they eat hyena. <laughs> no, uh, you know, it, no, we don't like to eat, but the, some people. Some, some ulama, they say, and some people, they started to shoot. It's a lot of hyena there. <laughs> <laughs> and so they'll kill them or bring them in. Yeah. So we'll talk about it in more detail because there's a specific hadith on the hyena. Where we'll have to review it uh, and see the authenticity of the hadith because there is a hadith that uh, makes an exception for the hyena out of all the other animals really? that are carnivorous. We'll have to look it up and see its authenticity because this was... Uh, uh, when we looked it up the other, the, maybe two years ago we talked yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Imam Ibn Qayyim, Imam Ibn Qayyim considers it as, uh, uh, as not, as, as not as, um, uh, he does it, it's not categor categorized with the animals that we are prohibited to eat. That is carnivorous. It is carnivorous. But if there's a specific te text that makes an exception, then it, there's an exception. But we have to look into that text and see its authenticity. We haven't looked. We haven't looked deeper into it. It was big time, very really challenging. Yeah, 
but but this is this is the thing. I and mean, they make uh, people make talk, give lectures about hyenas, uh, while we have more important stuff to talk about. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> correct. I mean, we 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 can we can spend the whole lecture about a hyena, you know. But it's, I don't think it's the most appropriate thing to do. <laughs> Me personally, if I see a hyena, I'll run away. <laughs> Horrible, yes. yeah. And uh, 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 I watched a documentary in Nigeria. They have these people who take hyenas as pets, and they pets. and they demo they, they, they go and uh, 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 start demonstrations. Exactly. On the streets. And some people feed them meat. You can see I these documentaries. Like, if, I, if I go to Somalia, I like to feed them. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they are animals. So uh, this is the this is the meat. Okay, lahm al khinzir. Okay, the the flesh of the. Swine, it is of course, it is of course najis, and that's by the verse that we read yesterday, chapter 6, verse 145. The, the verse that you read yesterday, and then if I know, illa in a kuna maitatan, or daman masfuhan, or lahma khinziri, fa in no ridges, because it is unclean or impure, and that refers primarily to the last thing mentioned here, which is the meat of the swine. So we talked about that. Yes. But 100% is a pork. Pork? Yeah, it's a pork. Pork? Mm. But they put the halal. Yeah. It would be a halal pork. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, I, I don't. Like, well, two times she went. Wallahi, uh, yeah, okay. But they put the halal. It's no. very cheap. It's halal pork. Yeah, it's cheap. Very cheap. Okay, we will look into this later. <laughs> let, 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 let's finish the class and talk about Superstore next class. <laughs> <laughs> They have a lot of frog has a lot of suction. The other thing is that, let me tell you, mm -hmm. the way it's compartmentalized, mm -hmm. if you are not very careful, you may stray into the area where uh, pork is. But the halal section is distinguishable. Uh -huh. Okay. I see the Even the guys, the guys, we have limited time. Okay. <laughs> From now on, the rule is yeah. no questions during the class. <laughs> okay. So no question. We'll do the questions at the very end. Okay. E even the comments, we'll leave them till the very end. Just try to remember your comments okay. and give them to the uh, leave them to the very end. Also, then we because we want to finish this part quick, real quick. Uh, the dog. Of, of course, we know the dog. Its flesh, its saliva, uh, its excretions. All of them are. Are najis, uh, and the hadith is clear on this one. Whenever a, a dog, you know, uh, drinks from your pot, then you have to wash it seven times. Uh, one of them, even with with earth as a cleansing. That was the, what they used for cleansing, by the way. The earth they used to that to scrub things because they didn't have these scrubbing materials and and detergents that we have today. So if somebody decided to do it, uh, if you want to take it literally, you can take it literally. literally. But if you uh, consider that they used earth as detergents, you can also use detergents of today as well. But you have to wash it seven times, okay? Um, and we talked about if, if, if the dog touches you, but there's no moisture that comes from the dog on you, then you don't have to wash that part. Okay, it's only if some moisture came from the dog, whether it's saliva or urine or, or feces, that is what has to be, has to be cleansed. Or if there's blood that comes, it's, if it's an injured dog or something, all these things have to be washed. Okay, uh, also lahm al siba, carnivorous animals, we talked about this. Lahm uh, al uh, himar. Also, anything that is prohibited to eat, any animal that is prohibited to eat in shara, it's considered as najis. Okay, that's another general rule. So everything that is najis is prohibited to eat. And any animal that is prohibited to eat, it becomes najis as well. Okay, lahm uh, al-himar, the donkey. The donkey flesh also is considered as najis in the Islamic, the Islamic law. Um, this happened in, in, um, when they conquered Khaybar, it's a town north of Medina. Um, they found some donkeys, the Sahaba, and that was before they knew it was prohibited. And they slaughtered and they started cooking. Uh, 
And then Prophet uh, uh, was informed of this and he immediately told the companions to, uh, you know, throw whatever is in the pots away. He even told them to break the pots uh, uh, because it now has been contaminated. contaminated with this najasa, okay? And then they said, can we just wash it very thoroughly? Then he allowed them just to wash it thoroughly, indicating that this flesh is actually unclean, not only prohibited to eat, but even unclean to the extent that he wanted to break the pots, but then when they said they can wash it, they said that's okay, it's okay. Uh, also, another thing that is najis, um, we talked about all this, I just wanna make sure we cover those ones. Something called al-jallala. Al-jallala, it could be an animal that is in the original state, we're allowed to eat it. But if this animal feeds on najasat, on unclean material, if you have some cows or goats that are feeding on some on feces or something, they can sometimes eat very dirty things or unclean or impure. That will actually affect their meat. If somebody eats a goat or a sheep that has been eating unclean material, you can you can sense this in the in the meat. It actually changes whatever the animal eats affects the meat. We all know this. Okay, uh, so there's there's a hadith on this matter. Naha Rasulullah Sallam and Akhlil Jalalati wa Albaniha. Even its milk, he prohibited it from being drank. Okay, it's called Al Jalala. Al Jalala min al Haywan Lati Ta Kulul Adira wal Jilla al Bar. So any animal that eats Adira means basically stool, feces. So if it does, then uh, this animal itself also becomes impure. You cannot eat its meat and you cannot drink from its milk. Uh, and what to do if this happens uh, Ibn Umar uh, uh, what he used to do is he used to keep the animal and change its food totally for several days at least three days before and then he would maybe slaughter this animal to change the, the consistency of what goes in, in its body okay Also, uh, but this, they say this does not really apply to chicken. This does not, this ruling applies to those animals that we slaughter, like the cow, the sheep, the goat, okay? Um, does not apply to the chicken. Does not. Um, so the, the eggs and the meat of the chicken um, does not carry this ruling, okay? Does not, but this ruling applies only to the to these animals here. If something is is nudges, if an animal is nudges, like the donkey, for instance, um, then everything becomes nudges. Its skin, its khayr? bone, its its teeth, okay? What about khayr? Khayr? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, horses, horses are permissible uh, in Sharia. They're permissible to be eaten, although it's not a habit of any community, at least of the Arab communities, they, never, they don't really eat horses. But it is not haram, it's not haram to eat the horse, if, 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 uh, if it just happens. But there's no, I'm not aware of any communities that eat horses. Do you know if anybody eats horses? They eat, no, they eat. Yeah. They eat horses here? Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is halal. Yeah, yeah. I, want, I would like to mention also that the, the moisture, the moisture that comes out from the vagina, that is not considered as najis. It's considered as tahir. Okay, that's important. Uh, but if it's, uh, uh, but it is considered that it does break the wudu. So if a woman has this moisture, this secretion that comes out from the vagina, uh, it actually comes out such as it does stain the underwear, then the wudu is broken. It's important to know that she has to make wudu. But uh, is it najis? It is not najis. Okay. Uh, it's, is it pre preferable to wash it off, to wash it off the clothing? And of course, they would have to wash the private parts, but is it, uh, do they have to wash the clothing? They don't have to, but it's f recommended because uh, Islam uh, recommends cleanliness in every matter, whether it is najasa or not najasa. Anything that is stained, you, it, it, you're encouraged to wash and you get reward for cleanliness in general, correct? In Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and loves what is beautiful and cleanliness is, is part of beauty. Anything that's unclean becomes ugly, correct? Yeah. So uh, that is important to know as well. 
what else? Uh, the many, I ask questions. Many, what semen, is it najis or not najis? Not najis. Does it break the wudu or not? Yes. Break the wudu and beyond. <laughs> break the wudu and causes the major impurity where you have to make a, a ghusl. The, the secretion coming out of the vagina, we talked about that one. The madhi, the madhi is that um, lubricant solution that comes out from the penis at times of arousal. That is najis, but the najasa is not a severe najasa. You can just uh, put some water, drop some water on it. You don't have to totally rinse and clean, uh, clean the, the clothing, uh, but it does break, does break the, it does break the wudu, correct? Uh, what else? al hayd hayd of course, hayd the menstruation, you have to, the woman has to make the full ghusl, and of course uh, it is, it is najis, al-istihada, something called istihada, which is the blood that comes out at times that are not the time of menstruation, such as if a woman has some kind of you know, um, they can have some kind of gynecological diseases that lead to bleeding uh, in between, uh, even not at the time of menstruation. So that <coughs> breaks the wudu, but it does not require the ghusl, does not require the ghusl. But if it's continuous, then the woman has to wash it off and make wudu for every salah. Uh, so if it comes out, so she, even if it comes out during the salah, she's fine because she made the wudu for that prayer and she's praying it. But she cannot go, for instance, she prayed duhr and she's fine and the blood was coming out, that's fine. But then if, uh, uh, if an awesome time comes, she has to make a new, wash herself again, uh, I mean wash the private parts and wash the clothing and, and, and make the wudu. Whether it is najis or not, what do you think? It is, it is the, probably najis, probably najis because it comes out from the vagina, and some, but some people said it's not najis. As I showed you the blood, there's too, so much difference in opinion on, on this matter, but better be on the safe side because it does come out from the vagina eventually, so it is considered as najasa. Is it prohibited? It's is it? Najis. Yes. Then, when, when should we be allowed to, to do salah? No, uh, so there's a difference between something being najis, uh, well, you, uh, uh, and, and the fact that uh, it, it breaks the wudu. But although the najasa, najasa is coming out, if we consider it, what's, what's this sound? Is this your phone or what? It's my phone, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, because there's a specific hadith on this matter. Even the najasa, if it is unavoidable, no. then it doesn't make your life stop. Uh, so the woman, there was a woman who had this istihada. She had continuous blood all the time. And she stopped praying. So she came to Prophet Sallallahu and he told her, uh, that no, you, this is what you do. You make this wudu, you clean yourself, you make the wudu, you pray your salah. And she said to him, but the blood is still coming out. He says, qatra. He says, even if your prayer rug is, is, is soaked with blood because of your blood, you still continue your salah. And this applies to somebody who has salas al bawl, uncontrollable urination, incontinence. Anybody who ha cannot control the najasa, do we tell them not to pray? Then no, we don't tell them not to pray. Then, uh, because Allah says, "Oma jala alaykum fi dini min haraj." Whenever there is difficulty beyond your ability, then you are excused. Uh, and this applies to every part of Sharia. If you cannot fast because you, you are sick, then you you don't fast, and nothing is there's nothing on you, and so on. So uh, uh, that's just a general rule that overrides everything. Okay. Exactly, some blood. Finally, uh, this blood, if it's coming out, she can pray. We consider the blood as najis most probably, although some scholars did not consider it as najis. And she can still have a intercourse with her husband. Uh, although there's blood in that area, still because it's not dam height, it is not considered as menstrual blood. Okay, And that is why some of them said it's not najis. They said the Sharia would not have allowed him to have intercourse with her if this was najasa. <laughs> but really, that's not really a strong... Uh, opinion because this najasa is unavoidable so you cannot have her life stop she can't pray she can't have a husband it's not it's not expected from sharia to say that sharia allows her life to go on she can have sexual intercourse with her husband but she has to clean just before each salah and that is the maximum that she can do that is the maximum she can do now we'll stop here